Welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Simranjit from Department of Zoology, Miranda House, University of Delhi. This module will be on cell cell adhesion and we will be understanding how the cells interact and integrate into tissues and how do they attain their distinctive structures with their specified functions. After studying this module, you shall be able to appreciate the importance of cell-cell interactions in the important cellular processes of multicellular organisms, understand the different types of cell adhesion molecules, describe various kinds of possible cell-cell interactions, understand the role of adhesion molecules in different human diseases also. All categories of cell-cell adhesion junctions function by two component system. The intracellular attachment proteins, these mediate attachment of cytoskeleton filaments on the inside of the plasma membrane to the junction and the cathedrins which overhang from the cell surface and interconnect cells to each other. The cell junctions can be broadly grouped into adherence junctions and desmosomes. These function to anchor the cells to each other and transmembrane adhesion proteins of this particular type belong to the cathedron family. Next we have the focal adhesions and hemidesmosomes which attach the cells to the ECM while the transmembrane adhesion proteins functioning in this belong to the integrin family. It is important to note here that while the cytoskeleton material building the anchoring junction is actin for adherence junction and focal adhesion, intermediate filaments are involved for desmosomes and hemidesmosome. We first look at the adherence junctions. These are identified by actin as the principal cytoskeleton material connecting the calcium binding cathedrin mediated adhesive junctions. The space between adjacent membrane is about 20 to 25 nanometers. Specially prominent in epithelial cells wherein these junctions form a continuous zone of attachment called the zona adherens that encircles the cells near the epical end of the lateral membrane thus establishing the epico-basal polarity. These also function as mechanosensors and serve as a nexus for signaling affecting important cell decision such as survival and differentiation. For non-epithelial cells, the adherence junctions are represented as a small punctate or streak-like attachments. The beta-catenin, which is a prominent cytosolic protein, binds to the cytosolic tail of the cathedron and performs numerous roles in the cell notably in the wind signaling pathway which is important in cancer. The alpha catenin is also recruited for the attachment of actin to the junction. The third major core component of adherent junction is P120 catenin. Like alpha catenin, P120 catenin also binds to the cytoplasmic tail of cathedrins near the plasma membrane. It helps in regulating both the stability of cathedrin at the surface as well as the activity of rho which is an actin regulator. Next we look at desmosomes. Desmosomes are localized button-like points of strong union between adjacent cells in a tissue abundantly found in skin heart, muscle and neck of the uterus. Apart from providing structural integrity, desmosomes also enable cells to resist stress. The plasma membrane of two neighboring cells run parallel to each other and are separated by an extracellular space of about 25 to 35 nanometer and is called as the desmosome core. Adhesion proteins, namely the desmosomal cathedrins, desmocholin and desmoglein are present in the core 
and linked by their cytosolic tails to the cytoskeleton. The placoglobin binds to the desmocolin and intracellular anchor proteins that is desmoplakin which in turn is connected to tonofilaments, the intermediate filaments comprising of vimitin, desmin or keratin. The hemidesmosomes are the junctions between epithelial cells and underlying connective tissue that is the ECN. These occur on the inner surface of the basal surface of keratinocytes in the epidermis of skin while desmosomes link two cells together and the hemidesmosomes attach one cell to the extracellular matrix. Desmoglanes are absent, instead integrins are used for attaching the cell to the ECM. The keratin filaments are linked by different members of the plaquen family, example plectin to integrins. The hemidesmosome comprises of two rivet-like plants, the inner and the outer plaques. Together with the anchoring fibrils and anchoring filaments, these are collectively termed as hemidesmosome stable adhesion complex or hemidesmosome anchoring filament complex. Together, the hemidesmosome anchoring filament complex forms a continuous structural link between the basal keratinocyte, keratin intermediate filaments and the underlying basement membrane zone and the dermal components. We will now discuss the tight junctions. The components of tight junctions are arranged to form a continuous belt near the apical end lying just above the adherence junctions. These belts form an effective barrier restricting the transport of molecules in and out of the cell. Each junction is made from an interconnected network extending and giving a cross ridge shaped appearance under the freeze factor microscopy. An individual ridge consists of a continuous row of tightly packed transmembrane proteins of about 3 to 4 nanometer in diameter. These are generally fused to eliminate any intracellular spaces. In addition to these close membrane appositions, scaffolding proteins at the tight junctions recruit cytoskeletal proteins such as the F active to the tight junctions. An analogy of tight junction can be made with gates that prevent the movement of molecules through the lateral margins and with fences that block the lateral movement of the lipids in the outer membrane and transmembrane proteins entirely. The three important transmembrane proteins of the tight junctions include occludin, immunoglobulin superfamily proteins called the junctional adhesion molecules or the JAMs and the clotins. The structure of clotins consists of four membrane spanning domains with the largest extracellular loop comprising of charged amino acids which facilitate the passage of specific ions. Such loops of adjacent cells are fused to form ion selective pores and transport occurs paracellularly that is ion move between the cells. The significance of tight junctions can be understood by looking into the glucose transport in the ep intestinal epithelium. In the intestine, tight junctions seal the epithelium of polarized epithelial cells and the sodium potassium ATPase pump in the basolateral plasma membrane drive sodium glucose symporters in the epical part of the plasma membrane. The glucose unipotors in the basolateral plasma membrane move glucose from the lumen of the intestine to the blood. The basolateral potassium channels 
recycle the potassium back into the cell. The third major type of cell junctions are the gap junctions. These are explained as regions of cytoplasmic contact between the plasma membranes of two cells with a gap of only 2 to 3 nanometers in between. It acts as a molecular pipeline for the transport of ions and small molecules. Such cellular connections are significant as these allow adjacent cells to be in direct electrical and chemical communication with each other. The slide here gives a pictorial representation of the various types of cell junctions that we have studied so far. Next we look at the components of cell adhesion. Cell adhesion is important in tissue formation as well as cell motility and is mediated by cell adhesion molecules or CAMs or adhesion receptors, extracellular matrix proteins and the cytoplasmic plaque or peripheral membrane proteins. The transmembrane cell adhesion molecules are linked through the adapter proteins in cytoplasmic plaques to the cytoskeleton in all the cell cell adhesion junctions. The adhesion molecules or receptors are transmembrane glycoproteins and consist of five major classes namely the cathedrins, immunoglobulins, superfamily, selectins, mucins and the integrins. These either form stable cell cell adhesions or are involved in cell matrix adhesion and help in cell migration or cell to cell interaction. Talking about cathedrin, cathedrin is a transmembrane protein of nearly 700 or 750 amino acids and consists of an extracellular or the EC domain, a transmembrane and a cytoplasmic domain. The EC domain contains repeated sequences which act as calcium binding sites and hence the name cathedrin. The cell adhesion is mediated through the EC domain or cathedrin repeats of opposing cells. Cathedrins are further divided as six subfamilies namely the classical cathedrins, desmosomal cathedrins, protocathedrins, flamingo and the dustious and the fat cathedrins. The figure depicts the structure of different classes of cathedrins with distinct characteristics in both the extracellular and cytoplasmic domains. The extracellular domain or in the figure are depicted in purple boxes while the transmembrane domains are depicted in the red boxes. The cytoplasmic domains are colored green and orange. Mena and Homer are the intracellular anchor proteins with which fat cathedrins bind with cytoskeleton actin proteins and SCG10 is a microtubule destabilizing protein. The binding of calcium is very crucial for the cathedrin mediated cell adhesion because in the absence of calcium the binding of cathedrin to two opposing cells is very weak. It is only after the binding of calcium the interaction becomes very stable and stiff because the calcium are positioned in between the cathedrin repeats thereby locking the repeats together into a stiff rod like structure. Also there is an additional level of rigidity which is attained after conformational changes induced from binding of individual cathedrins of two cells together. It is observed that if all the calcium binding sites of cathedrins are not occupied for instance as in the case of low extracellular calcium concentration then the EC part of the cathedrin protein becomes droppy and is finally degraded by proteolysis. Based on the specific structural features cathedrins are also classified as type 1, type 2 and type 3 or atypical cathedrins. 
The type 1 and 3 cathedrins are found only in vertebrates and ascidians. The cathedrin mediated intercellular interactions either include cis interactions wherein type 1 cathedrins engage in lateral interactions on the same cell or trans interactions which are commonly homophilic interactions which involve binding with the same type of cathedrin on opposing cells. But heterophilic interactions which consist of binding of different cathedrin molecules on the neighboring cells. The cytoplasmic tail of cathedrin interacts with the actin cytoskeleton mediated by two anchor proteins the alpha catenin and the beta catenin and an intracellular protein that is the P120 catenin to form the so called zona adherens or the adherens junction. The alpha catenin binds to beta catenin which further binds in a region of nearly 96 amino acids near the C terminal of the cytoplasmic domain of cathedrin while P120 catenin attaches directly to the cytoplasmic tail at the membrane proximal region. Binding of these proteins is crucial for the proper functioning and stability of cathedrin. Cathedrins also interact with other adapter proteins like vinculin as well as non-muscle myosins at the zona adherens to form linkages between cell membrane and actin cytoskeleton. Thus, it is clear that cathedrins regulate the dynamic actin cytoskeleton. Now, let us look at the different anchor proteins of the desmosome. The multi-protein complex mediated by cathedrins can also bind to intermediate filaments instead of actin filaments in a structure named as desmosome and consist of different anchor or adapter proteins of which placoglobin, placophilin and intracellular domains of cathedrin proteins such as the desmoglein and desmoglein's are most noticeable. The type of intermediate filaments in the desmosomes differ with the cell type. For example, keratin filaments in most epithelial cells and desmin filaments in heart muscle cells. This kind of multi-protein structure also called the desmosomal plaque of high tensile strength provides mechanical support and is particularly plentiful in tissues which are subjected to frequent mechanical stress like the heart muscle and epidermis. In fact, the importance of desmosome can be directly seen from the incidence of diseases like blistering of sin, skin which is caused by disruption of desmosomes and other diseases. It has also been reported that desmosomes can also be targeted during bacterial infection, for example, the exfoliated toxins of Staphylococcus aureus which cause a number of blisterous diseases can cleave a desmosomal cathedrin. Additionally, the role of desmosomes in cancer and tumor cells like skin, head, neck and lungs and breast and a variety of other epithelial malignancies including gastric and colon cancers has been observed with reduced expression of cathedrins resulting in loose cell-cell adhesion. Also, adapter proteins in desmosomes regulate cell cycle and apoptosis by signaling molecules. The next class of cell adhesion molecules includes the immunoglobulin SF camps which are transmembrane glycoproteins with a large extracellular domain consisting of immunoglobulin like repeats and hence the name. These immunoglobulin like domains are made up of beta sheets which are stabilized by disulfide linkages. The members of these subfamilies differ only in their EC domain with variable number of Ig like domain which assist in cell cell binding and fibronectin type 3 or FN3 repeats which are involved in signaling that regulate the neurite growth. 
Selectins are transmembrane glycoproteins composed of three extracellular domains namely the calcium binding lectin domain and hence the name or carbohydrate recognition domain on the N terminus an epidermal growth factor like domain and a differing number of consensus repeats related to the complement regulatory protein. This is followed by a transmembrane domain and a short cytoplasmic tail at the C terminus. Selectins play a very important role in innate adaptive immunity like E-selectin recruits leukocytes including monocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes to the site of inflammation. The development of an inflammatory response in conditions like diabetes, atherosclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis and cancer is a highly regulated process which involves adhesion and rolling of circulating leukocytes along the vascular endothelial cells by interaction of E-selectin and its ligand followed by transendothelial migration into the inflamed tissue. There are three family members identified E-selectin, L-selectin and P-selectin. E-selectin is expressed exclusively on endothelial cell. L-selectin is found on all lymphocytes except the activated T lymphocytes and P-selectin is found in secretory granules of platelets and the endothelial cells. The EGF domain is involved in the ligand recognition along the lectin domain while the complement binding repeats participate in protein binding. The cytoplasmic domain plays a role in regulating cell adhesion by cytoskeleton interactions. We can now discuss integrins which are heteromeric transmembrane glycoproteins and constitute a large family of cell adhesion molecules. In fact, the term was used by Heinz in 1987 in his review article to describe a family of structurally and functionally related cell surface heterodimeric receptors which integrated the ECM with the cellular cytoskeleton to the mediate the cell migration and adhesion. The structure consists of two different subunits, the alpha and the beta, which are joined non-covalently to each other. Both the subunits have a short intracellular tail of about 40 to 70 amino acids in length. The EC domain of both the subunits can bind to calcium, magnesium, and manganese. Note that these all are the divalent cations, right? Integrins recognize the typical RGD sequence that is the arginine, glycine and aspartate sequence present in the ECM proteins like the fibronectin, vitronectin, collagen and laminin and hence facilitate the cell ECM interaction which further play an important role in several biological functions such as cell growth, survival and differentiation. The integrins are able to exert their function by the binding of ligands and the list is so vast that the table is still not complete for us, right? And the list includes a large number of extracellular matrix proteins for the bone matrix proteins, the collagens, the fibronectins, the fibrinogens, laminins, to name a few, which also stabilizes the conformation to form a bend to an extended conformation. To summarize, this chapter presents a comprehensive and recent knowledge on the cooperation of cell adhesion molecules or CAMs which are a diverse group of transmembrane proteins and play an important role in many fields like immunology, developmental biology and malignancy. In fact, they have been referred to as the glue of life and maintaining the integrity of tissues and organs by cell adhesion and mediating cellular communication along with junction channels. The cell cell adhesion is required for cell migration, differentiation, several developmental pathways, wound healing, regeneration 
and also in pathological conditions like metastasis, inflammation, etc. Also, CAMs have been the target of therapeutic research to find out cure and management of various human diseases. Thank you students and I hope that you would have gained from this particular module on cell cell adhesion.